everyone, I'm Tony Garcia, and I am one of the Senior Assistant Directors at Northwestern University. I welcome you to Engineering Week. We have a great set of programming all lined up for you, so hopefully you are as excited as we are. And of course, we have a great group of panelists here for you today to give you a really great overview of what engineering is all about at Northwestern. Um, so with that said, I'm actually going to turn it over to our panelists to go ahead and introduce themselves. Uh, why don't we go ahead and start with you, Wes? Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Wes Burkhart. I'm the Associate Dean for Undergraduate Programs in the McCormick School of Engineering. Uh, I'm also a faculty member in the Department of Chemical and Biological Engineering. Uh, I've been at Northwestern 30 years now, which is quite a while. And I'm also the proud parent of a Northwestern senior. Uh, Joe, why don't you take it? Thanks, Wes. Yeah, and I'm Joe Holtgreave, uh, one of the assistant deans in the undergraduate engineering office. I am also an alum of Northwestern, did my undergraduate degree in industrial engineering. I, uh, similar to Wes, I've been here for quite a while. I've been here for 26 years. And uh, during that time, I work with undergraduate students uh, who are having maybe difficulty navigating the system. And uh, I also direct an office of personal development I'll talk a little bit about later. And I'm also the father of uh, a Northwest, two Northwestern students, one engineering and one Medill. Ellen? Hi, my name is Ellen Worstel, and I'm also an assistant dean here in the undergrad office. I'm the, the baby of the group. I've only been at Northwestern for about 22 years. <laughs> so, um, and I work uh, primarily with some of our student organizations, and I'm thrilled to be here and, and talk with you. All right, Tony, should I take it away or were you going to say a bit more? Uh, just give a quick rundown of what we, the students can expect. So we're going to do a 30 minute presentation. And then after that, we'll all come back up, answer some questions that you might have. And then um, I'll say my goodbyes. So with that, I'll let you guys go ahead and take it away. All right. I am hopefully sharing my screen. Uh, hopefully everyone can see this. Um, uh, our goal here in this session is to provide an introductory overview of undergraduate engineering at Northwestern, uh, but I'd also like to put this session into context with uh, the other things that are happening this week. Uh, so later on this afternoon, there'll be an opportunity to learn a little bit about student groups. On Tuesday, we'll have a lecture about the role of design in McCormick and a panel discussion of our freshman design thinking and communication course. On Wednesday, there'll be a virtual tour of the Ford Building and a discussion of the Farley Center for Entrepreneurship. Uh, Thursday, we turn our focus to research uh, with faculty from our Center for Synthetic Biology and some of the undergraduate researchers who are involved in that work. And finally, on Friday, we'll have presentations to learn about uh, the support we provide uh, for job placement, internships, co-op, professional development opportunities. Uh, so I hope many of you will be able to join in, uh, in some of this programming uh, as it uh, uh, suits your interests uh, over the course of the week. I would like to talk to you a little bit about engineering, broadly speaking. Um, I am an engineer, and there are many things I like about it. Uh, but when we think about the challenges uh, faced by humanity, faced in society, uh, we realize uh, that uh, engineering will and must play a crucial part of how, how we rise up to meet these challenges. Um, and in McCormick, our goal is to uh, prepare students to make real contributions in the world around us uh, in, in addressing these problems. Um, a, a critical piece of this uh, involves the theme of what we call whole brain engineering. Um, and the idea of whole brain engineering is that uh, we need to purposefully lay claim to a broad range of skills that are essential uh, in the practice of engineering, uh, as well as in uh, the business of engineering education that we're involved with. Uh, so stereotypically, you can think of the two sides of the brain as addressing different types of cognitive skills. Uh, and normally when you think about engineering, you'd be inclined to focus on what we refer to as left brain skills, quantitative skills, analysis, uh, really zeroing down into the details um, and uh, trying to uh, arrive at a well-defined uh, solution to well-defined problems. Uh, but this really misses a lot of the richness of what is involved in engineering. And we use the whole brain engineering metaphor 
uh, to really explicitly uh, talk about the need to develop other ways of thinking, other skills uh, that we think of in terms of right brain skills, creativity, uh, the importance of uh, understanding people and how we work, uh, being able to focus not just on the details, but also on the big picture, and being comfortable with ambiguity, being able to hold many thoughts in your brain at the same time. Um, and this metaphor of whole brain engineering really guides and shapes uh, most of what we do in the business of undergraduate engineering education. And I hope some of these things will become clear uh, as we uh, go through our session today. Uh, a few things I'd like to particularly highlight are first the benefit we derive as engineering educators to operate in the context of Northwestern University as a whole. Uh, this is a great university across the board. And here in McCormick, we actively seek ways to form partnerships and give our students educational opportunities uh, that take advantage of all of what Northwestern has to offer. A critical uh, uh, theme in what we try to do in McCormick is to focus on engineering design uh, as one of the backbones of developing uh, this whole brain engineering philosophy. Um, and finally, we try very hard to create a very broad range of opportunities uh, for our students, both within the academic realm and outside of academics uh, to enable students to develop um, uh, in many different uh, academic and professional dimensions, uh, and also to create space for students to really customize their Northwestern educational experience uh, in engineering and beyond. Uh, so let me just give you a little bit of, of information. You're thinking about joining us as a freshman. Uh, you would be uh, um, in a freshman entering class of about 450 uh, to 500 students each year. We are getting close uh, to being about one quarter of the undergraduate student uh, body uh, at Northwestern. Uh, here are some uh, current demographics. Um, uh, we are slightly more than one third women. Uh, in recent years, we've seen a significant growth in underrepresented uh, students, and uh, we are about 15% international students. And our uh, undergraduate students work with a faculty that includes uh, more than 200 uh, full-time tenure-track faculty uh, whose efforts are augmented by 63 additional faculty uh, that focus specifically on teaching and education. Uh, at uh, Northwestern, we offer 13 different Bachelor of Science degree programs in engineering. I've listed the different topics uh, on this slide. I want to briefly mention uh, the 13th, which is something known as Integrated Engineering Studies. Uh, and this is a catch-all for an option that students have to propose a customized Bachelor of Science curriculum, uh, which is sort of the ultimate in customizing your academic experience to meet your particular interests and needs. Uh, this is not for the faint of heart. Students must um, uh, propose and uh, subject to review a, a, a detailed proposal for uh, the curriculum they would like to follow. Uh, but hopefully among our different degree programs, you will see something you like. Uh, down here on the bottom in purple, I've highlighted something that's important to know about Northwestern, which is once you've been admitted into McCormick, uh, students pick uh, completely freely uh, whichever degree program they want. There's no internal competition, no internal quotas or limitations on the number of students that can pursue any particular degree program. Uh, so you are definitely in the driver's seat about what you get to study uh, as an engineering student in McCormick. I'd like to provide a little bit of an overview of how our undergraduate curricula are structured. All of these degree programs follow a uh, similar template, which is uh, uh, represented schematically in this pie chart. Um, Overall, we require 48 credit units to get a bachelor's degree. And here at Northwestern, roughly speaking, one unit of credit corresponds to one course in one quarter. Uh, so over the course of a four-year degree program in the quarter system, uh, this works out to taking typically four courses per each academic quarter. Uh, we have many different categories in our curricula that really correspond to fundamental uh, topics, uh, math, science, uh, foundational courses in engineering analysis and design uh, that are taken early uh, in the uh, curriculum. And these requirements are pretty much uniform across all of our different degree programs. 
The actual major program uh, constitutes 16 units. So that's one third of the courses you take are very specialized to each of our individual degree programs. Uh, this is augmented by uh, a curricular category called basic engineering, where we want all of our students to be uh, exposed to certain uh, broad topics in engineering that we feel are important uh, to be a uh, McCormick engineer. Uh, and then finally, 25% uh, of our curriculum uh, either requires or gives students the opportunity to explore other corners of the university. Uh, we do require our students to take seven courses in social sciences and humanities. Uh, we insist that our students engage at least at this level um, uh, in learning about other ways of thinking, other areas of strength within the university. And when you combine that with five additional courses that are completely unrestricted electives, uh, this gives students uh, a lot of flexibility when combined with the quarter system uh, to augment their core studies in engineering with other uh, academic pursuits. Uh, there are um, uh, a number of different ways in which students can build academic flexibility into their studies. Uh, we have formal dual degree programs with the Bean and School of Music, with the School of Communication, and with the Weinberg College of Arts and Sciences. Um, but for students that are interested in exploring things beyond uh, engineering, it is more common and quite common, in fact, uh, for our students to pursue second majors or minors in many of the topics that are offered uh, across the university. Um, if a second major or a minor is too much, um, Northwestern offers a wide range of undergraduate certificate programs. Uh, you can think of these as something like minor minors. Uh, certificates are clusters, four or five or six courses uh, that typically zero in on some topic that falls between the cracks of traditional academic disciplines. Uh, it's a great way to customize uh, your experience without biting off too much. I'd like to briefly mention that we have a BSMS program that has become quite popular. Uh, this is a way for students uh, to work simultaneously towards both the bachelor's and a master's degree. Uh, frequently, students are able then to complete both a bachelor's and a master's in less time uh, than it would typically take if you did the degree separately. Uh, and finally, I'd like to point out that we have worked quite hard to create opportunities for our students to uh, study abroad or pursue other types of global opportunities. Uh, there will be time for a Q&A, and I'll be happy to address any questions you have about any of these things uh, as we proceed. Um, to give you some sense that uh, our students actually avail themselves of these academic opportunities, uh, this is a list. Uh, I, a couple of years ago, I just did a dump of student data for every engineering student, and I looked at all of the second majors that at that point had been declared by McCormick students. And I think this will give you a, a good sense that our students do indeed uh, partake of uh, the very broad offerings that Northwestern has uh, uh, on tap uh, for you if you come here. And then this is a similar listing. Uh, these are uh, minors or uh, certificates uh, that our students have uh, declared. I'd like to talk a little bit about some of the more signature academic offerings that play a very important role uh, within uh, engineering. Uh, as I mentioned at the start, we place a very strong emphasis on engineering design, uh, and this begins immediately uh, within the freshman year through our design thinking and communication class. Uh, this is organized by the Siegel Design Institute, which offers many other opportunities in design. Uh, this includes a broad slate of upper level design courses, uh, that are available to all McCormick students, regardless of their chosen degree program. And many students will uh, pursue a certificate in engineering design uh, based on uh, this available coursework. Uh, Siegel is also the home for our manufacturing and engineering, uh, uh, manufacturing and design engineering degree program. Uh, they run several different master's programs in design, and there are many faculty affiliated with Siegel that do research in design. Uh, and so I would particularly like to point out uh, that uh, tomorrow's uh, offerings in Engineering Week are very particularly focused on design, and I encourage you to learn more about them. Uh, I'd like to specifically talk a little bit about the role of design in our freshman curriculum here in McCormick. Uh, all engineering students are required to take a two-quarter sequence uh, known as design thinking and communication. Uh, this is really a signature sequence where right from the start we want to expose students to the reality uh, that engineering design 
uh, requires a broad range of skills that go beyond uh, simply technical excellence. Uh, this is a unique course also in that it is co-taught uh, with faculty from the Weinberg College who are experts in teaching writing, uh, because this is a course both in engineering design as well as in writing. Um, the key signature of this course is that students work in teams uh, to work on real design problems that come from real clients uh, in the real world. Uh, here we've listed a few of the project partners that uh, traditionally uh, figure prominently in DTC, uh, the Shirley Ryan Ability Lab, a rehabilitation hospital located on a medical school campus downtown, a shed aquarium, et cetera. And the goal is to expose students to the wide range of skills that are necessary to take a vaguely defined problem and try to figure out how to make progress in it. And we teach a systematic approach of human-centered design uh, to enable students to uh, attack uh, large and complicated problems right from the start. Um, on the right here, I've shown a feature article from the cover of the Wall Street Journal from a couple years ago. Uh, they got interested in what we were doing with this freshman design course. And they themselves, having learned about what we do in DTC, uh, came up with this table that illustrates uh, the many skills that are uh, uh, emerge uh, when our students tackle these very difficult, uh, very vaguely defined problems. Um, and uh, in particular, I'd like you to uh, note that we have a special session uh, focused on DTC tomorrow afternoon where you can learn more and see some examples of the type of work our students do in this course. We also have a Center for Entrepreneurship, uh, the Farley Center. Uh, Farley uh, is sort of the academic home for entrepreneurship within McCormick. Uh, they offer a very wide range of courses that can lead to a minor in entrepreneurship, which is uh, pursued by students both in engineering and across Northwestern. Uh, the signature uh, course or family of courses offered by Farley is called Nuvention. And Nuvention courses are taught in many different areas of themes, uh, medical, energy, web and media, et cetera. Uh, and within each theme, the goal of Nuvention courses is to bring teams of students together to pursue entrepreneurial exercises. What would it take to develop an idea and turn it into a business opportunity uh, in any of these themed areas? Uh, for instance, in the Nuvention medical course, uh, the course is specifically designed to bring together medical students, law students, business students, and engineering students together. It's a very rich uh, educational opportunity. Uh, but probably also provides support uh, for students that want to take the next step uh, and start up uh, companies. Um, and in particular, here at Northwestern, students interested in entrepreneurship uh, can take a valid advantage of an incubator space uh, known as the garage located in the North Campus parking structure. And many engineering students get heavily involved in entrepreneurial activities during their time here. And uh, of course, there is a, a plug for this as well. Entrepreneurship is one of the themes uh, that uh, you can learn more about on Wednesday. Uh, so everything I've talked about up to this point has been in the academic realm, the courses you take, things that end up on your transcript. Uh, but we have many other opportunities for students to develop in different ways during the time at Northwestern. And I'd like to pass it off now to Joe Holcreve, uh, who can be talking about some of these other opportunities. Thanks, Wes. So yeah, let me talk a little bit about some of the other resources and, and opportunities that you have available to you here in McCormick. Uh, well, first, I want to say the McCormick School has a dedicated office of engineering career development, which is in addition to the university's uh, office of career advancement. Engineering career development manages both our co-op and our professional internship uh, experiences. Uh, we highly recommend that you take advantage of these opportunities as an undergraduate. In fact, uh, each year, about 70 to 80 percent of our graduating seniors report that they did so. Um, this office is a wonderful resource that you can begin taking advantage of really from the very start of your education here through a course, particularly a popular course called Intro to Career Development, which you can uh, take in your first year. Um, Engineering Career Development will also be offering a uh, information session this Friday at four o'clock, so uh, be sure to, to uh, take advantage of that. In addition to co-op and professional internships, we also offer research as a fantastic way of improving your critical thinking skills and your resilience. Um, 
I can honestly say that for those of you who are interested in research, there are unique opportunities for you to engage with faculty uh, outside of the classroom and, and oftentimes in their labs. It is truly a part of the culture here at McCormick. Uh, as many as half or sometimes even more than half of our graduating seniors each year tell us that they participated in undergraduate research during their time in McCormick. And many of them receive funding through uh, the McCormick School or the university uh, resources. Academic advising and support are also extremely important in McCormick. For that reason, we've created a peer-led seminar series for first-year engineering students designed to help you successfully navigate the transition from high school to college. We also have a dedicated team of first-year faculty advisors who specialize in things like choosing your first-year classes and selecting a major. After that first year, you'll then be transitioned to a faculty advisor in whatever chosen department uh, you end up in. The university also offers a centralized uh, resource called ASLA, which stands for Academic Support and Learning Advancement. Another resource, resource uh, available to you that I direct is the Engineering Office of Personal Development, or PRDV. PRDV provides curriculum and experiences to help support your personal growth during your time here in McCormick. And we talk to our employers, quite honestly, and ask them what the students are missing when they finally you know, when they make it to you. Uh, their answers are almost never technical knowledge or engineering skills. It's almost always the ability to effectively manage themselves and to communicate and collaborate effectively with others. Those are the skills we focus on in the Office of Personal Development. We want you to become whole brain engineers. Well, I would even add whole being engineers who possess accurate self-awareness, authentic self-empowerment, effective self-advocacy and resilience. One of the ways we do this is by offering courses like the first year experience seminar I mentioned earlier, as well as other courses on topics that include emotional intelligence, improv performance, and even swing dancing, which is our whole body thinking class. Uh, it's collaborative part, partner solving through part uh, collaborative problem solving through partner dancing. We also offer a course called Path, which is designed to teach you the skills for effective performance. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to now pass it on to my my colleague Ellen Warstall, who's going to talk to you about student life and other opportunities to get involved. Great, thanks, Joe. Um, so I would argue that I have one of the, the best jobs in McCormick. <laughs> I get to work directly with our student organizations. Uh, we offer multiple times throughout the academic year for students to learn about the different types of organizations that they can get involved with. And so today is just a highlight of this area. Um, and I would like to mention, too, that you know, as an engineering student, you may not always feel that you have a significant amount of free time. So you're going to have to be selective in how you choose to spend that time. And the reality is that you're just not going to be able to be involved in everything. So the secret is to pick an organization that matches your interest and your goals and actually seems like fun. <laughs> um, student groups can play, play a vital role in helping to build a strong sense of community among our undergraduate students. They're all voluntary opportunities as well. And each group is student-led and works closely with a faculty advisor. On the next slide, I'd like to show you some of what McCormick can actually offer you. Um, sl slide, sorry. <laughs> this is just a, a sampling of some of our 30 McCormick student organizations. And as you can see, our groups are placed into four different classifications. Uh, we offer design organizations where students typically build a device and then participate in regional and national competitions. Uh, we have professional societies that are affiliated with a specific engineering major or department. Um, we also offer a number of organizations where, which provide students with an opportunity to use their engineering knowledge to start creating a positive impact in the world. And finally, we have groups that focus on outreach programs throughout the entire Chicagoland area. Our outreach focus groups can provide also additional opportunities for students to meet engineers outside of their specific majors. So now that you know some of what we would be able to offer you, here's just a few reasons why you should think about getting involved. 
Um, one, it's a great way to meet other students. And so one of the greatest benefits that McCormick can provide you with will be the students sitting next to you in your classes and in research labs. Um, our students are all the future of engineering, and they're going to be the individuals who'll have that skill set to go out and positively impact the world. And as we know, college is more than just your academics. Uh, it's a time for you to build friendships and bonds that'll last the rest of your life. And so student groups are a great place to start making those lifelong friends and start creating memories. Uh, companies all know that student activities are all optional. Getting involved is not mandatory. It shows companies that you take initiative and you seek out opportunities to grow your skill set. The skills you develop can all be transferred to help further your career. Student groups allow you to further your leadership skills and increase the level of responsibility that you can also handle. Like most universities, we have companies who recruit members of specific organizations because they know those students have sought out opportunities outside of the classroom to make an impact. Almost all of our student organizations also have an outreach component. We know that there isn't a lot of great PR about what engineering is or what it can offer you at the junior high or high school level. Our student groups sponsor outreach events, which help to encourage younger students to pursue engineering as they get older. Some of our organizations also offer opportunities to travel internationally. And so since engineering is a global profession and our student organizations offer then another alternative to gaining an international experience outside of the traditional study abroad program. Um, as you can see after our session today at five, you're going to have a fantastic opportunity to interact with some of our student leaders. We have representatives from three of our student organizations, the National Society of Black Engineers, the NU Solar Car team, which you actually see a photo of, um, and our robotics team will be present. Now I'd like to toss it back to Wes. Uh, thanks, Ellen. So I hope uh, you've all gotten a sense from this quick overview uh, that Northwestern is a resource rich environment. Uh, many opportunities for students uh, to get involved in many things in the course of their engineering education. Uh, I'm proud uh, of the people I work with. I'm proud of what we've tried to build here at Northwestern. And I'd like to close just by highlighting some national recognition uh, that Northwestern has received. In particular, uh, this is an award earned by our boss, uh, Dean Julio Atino, a few years ago. Uh, the Gordon Prize from the National Academy of Engineering, in fact, is the most prestigious award in the field of engineering education uh, in the United States. And a few years ago, uh, Julio Dinatino was recognized for his efforts to develop the theme and uh, this entire uh, mindset of whole brain engineering uh, that we've tried to uh, build here at Northwestern and use uh, and invite students to join in uh, as um, a framework for their education. Uh, so we feel this is a very strong indicator uh, that what we have here at Northwestern is special. Now, um, that kind of concludes our prepared presentation. I hope and believe that we have time available for questions. And let me invite Tony back into the discussion and uh, she will tell you how to get questions answered. Thank you, everyone. That was amazing. I learned a lot and I'm an alum, so <laughs> it's always great to hear. Um, so now is the point in the presentation where we want to hear from you. If you have any particular questions, please go ahead and let us know. These wonderful people are here to answer these questions for you. While you're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and also thank my uh, colleague, Amanda Bustamante, who is there answering the questions in the chat for you. And she's also going to go ahead and relay those over to us. Uh, but we have had a few people dropping some questions. So why don't we start hopefully with something pretty soft. Uh, what percent of students pursuing graduate, oh, what is the percent of students pursuing graduate education versus career placement? I would say roughly speaking, and this is pretty stable uh, from year to year, about three quarters of our bachelor's graduates will um, uh, seek permanent employment uh, having received their bachelor's degrees. Uh, about 20% of our students uh, will head on for graduate study of one form or another. Uh, this includes students that are participating in our BSMS program. And for them, continuing on in graduate study might be as little as staying on an extra one or two quarters to complete a master's degree. Uh, probably 10 to 12% or so of our uh, BS graduates um, uh, 
head off into PhD study. Um, so that's about, and then, you know, there's, there's kind of a handful, which is hard to, uh, uh, hard, hard to, to categorize doing different types of service work, military service or the like. Thank you. Uh, so how accessible are the professors? Are the classes taught by professors or their TAs? The uh, vast majority of our classes are taught primarily by uh, faculty instructors. Uh, there is a role for teaching assistants uh, at Northwestern, uh, but generally speaking, the role of teaching assistants is to provide help, uh, hold up office hours, uh, being involved in grading or perhaps preparing exams and homework, um, perhaps running laboratory sessions. But the primary instructor for pretty much every course you take at Northwestern uh, will be a faculty member. So we got a question, and this does come often to many of us in the admissions office, is uh, for those students that are looking to pursue the MSBS programs, the five-year programs, um, what does that course work or that course, uh, the course load look like compared to somebody who's maybe just pursuing the four-year major? Sure, I will uh, talk a little bit more in depth about the BSMS program. Uh, there are, are two key aspects to it, I would say. Uh, first is that it is a low barrier way to gain admission into a graduate program. Um, students in the BSMS program don't have to take standardized tests. Um, we uh, refund their application fee. Um, and uh, in fact, if your undergraduate GPA is high enough, you are essentially guaranteed admission into the master's program. Uh, so it's an easy way to uh, continue your studies into a master's program uh, with less hassle than, than would typically be associated. I'd say the more important thing, however, is that uh, for students that are fortunate and able to walk into the door at Northwestern with some measure of advanced placement credit or other forms of advanced standing, uh, the BSMS program provides the opportunity to begin working towards your graduate requirements while you are still uh, completing your undergraduate requirements with the result being that you have an opportunity to complete both a bachelor's and a master's degree uh, on an accelerated time frame. Uh, the extreme version of this would be students who can complete both a bachelor's and a master's degree within four years. Um, uh, I'd say a couple dozen students or so each year manage to do just that. Uh, that does require uh, some amount of advanced placement in order to make that possible. Um, and the master's portion of this Typically, students that pursue the BSMS program will do a, a non-thesis master's degree, which essentially amounts to one full year of additional coursework. Uh, but again, most students that pursue the program pursue it because uh, they have the chance to finish up two degrees in less than five total years of coursework. Can I just also add uh, that uh, one of the th things that is a, is a nice feature of that program, particularly if there's a class that you have to take that might be only offered in a certain sequence and you're done with everything else, you can begin working on your master's as you're finishing up your, your uh, bachelor's degree. And uh, that program also does offer students an opportunity if they do want to take a break and maybe not finish it right away to defer. So it's not something you have to finish right away. So it's, it's a, there's some nice uh, features to it. Thank you. So we got one that's a bit more of an ambitious que admissions question, which I'll go ahead and answer. But then I want to get your take maybe on the advising and engineering, because the question was, um, you know, when applying to Northwestern, do we apply directly into our major um, or are we applying directly to the engineering school or is it just Northwestern in general? So kind of quickly, um, when you apply to Northwestern, you do select one of the six undergraduate schools. So if you're interested in engineering, you would indicate the McCormick School of Engineering and Applied Science. Uh, but correct me if I'm wrong, the students do have until their sophomore year to de officially declare their major. In the meantime, I guess, what does advising uh, look like for those students as they're trying to figure out or maybe solidify their decisions? I, I can start on this. Um, you're exactly right. Uh, um, uh, when you apply, if you wish, if you have a clear idea of what you want to major in within engineering, you can indicate that on your application, uh, but it is not binding in any way. Um, as I mentioned, uh, once you're in engineering, you can pick whatever major you want. 
Um, I talked a little bit about some elements of our freshman curriculum. This is common across pretty much all of our engineering majors. And so it's not necessary really to pick finally a choice of major till the end of the sophomore year. Uh, during that first year then, uh, the advising is performed by a team of faculty that specialize particularly in freshman advising, helping students manage the process of getting acclimated to college life, uh, explore the question of what major they might want to pursue. Uh, and as Joe had mentioned, um, uh, that process is also facilitated and supported uh, by our first year experience seminars that are peer led. Uh, so it's at the end of the freshman year, we ask students to be a little bit more specific in picking a major. Uh, I guess I would also add that even beyond that point, uh, students might sometimes still refine their final choice of major uh, well into the sophomore year. We try to be quite flexible um, uh, and give students the chance to settle in with what really uh, will be most satisfying to them in the end. Uh, welcome other comments, Joe, that you might have. No, I think that's a, I think that's, that is well said. And I think that one other thing, again, this isn't really, you know, something we want to necessarily promote is leaving engineering, but I do think that one of the unique features of Northwestern in general is the value and the priority we place on flexibility. And that was really from the top down, the board of trustees a number of years ago made that decision that we really wanted Northwestern to be a place where students had the flexibility to switch between not only programs, but schools. And so it's it's pretty simple to, to switch if you find that that your interests have, have taken you in a different direction. Great, and it looks like we have time for maybe just one more question. So one question that I know we get a lot in the admissions office, and it's better to hear it from the experts. <laughs> what would you consider is the most important skill or strength Northwestern engineers need? Well, I think we should all be put on the spot with that question. So I will start. Um, uh, so uh, to me, you know, we, we try to uh, lay out how we think about the business of engineering education, uh, what we feel is special about Northwestern, what we feel is special about McCormick in terms of the range of opportunities, the way we think about the challenge of engineering education. and. Uh, I guess what I think is most important for a student to be successful in this environment is that this sounds like a good um, fit, uh, that they uh, appreciate the opportunities to engage broadly with world-class universities, uh, that they're excited, for instance, about our emphasis on design, on uh, opportunities and entrepreneurship or research or, or many of these, uh, the these different things. Of course, every engineer uh, cannot avoid cannot escape uh, the fact that engineering is a rigorous technical discipline. Uh, there is a lot of work that needs to be done and difficult skills uh, to, to be uh, mastered uh, that account for the value of engineers out in society. Uh, and engineering is all of that. But when I think about what's particular to Northwestern, I think it's um, the effort we've taken to think beyond uh, the purely technical realm of engineering. Uh, and uh, hopefully there are students out there listening to this uh, that get a little bit excited at uh, a broader vision of what engineering offers. Um, and those are the students that I hope will apply and, and join us. I, I was going to say uh, passion. And I think that's from the students that I work with. They have so much passion with how they approach not only just their academic work, but this drive to make a difference in the world and to make the world a better place. The world has a lot of problems and exactly what Wes was saying earlier, engineers are the ones that are gonna get the solutions. Um, and what I've seen is just the unselfishness of the, the passion that our students have with every day they get up and no matter how challenging or hard it is, they're ready and they move on to the next task. And um, the relationships that form as a result of that is just something that has kept me there for so long and gets me excited too. So, and Joel, Joel, clean up. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's great. And I, uh, all the all the classes that I teach, you know, so I'm going to approach this from the personal development perspective. All the the courses that I teach have three major kind of themes, and that's intentional attention, accurate awareness, and healthy connection. Okay, and that's connection to your to yourself, to others, and to the pr present moment. 
But I would say if, if I had to pick one skill that I think all students really need to be successful, I would add uh, self-compassion. And I think it's really, um, you know, as, as someone who spent the last you know, 26 years working with students who are struggling, uh, you know, oftentimes a lot of the source of that struggle is our own internal um, uh, criticism, judgment, and, uh, and you know, we, can, we can beat ourselves up pretty, pretty badly. And, and so it's really, as engineers, we are all about optimizing and, and efficiency, right? And so it's really, I just think about it as, as optimizing your energy. And when we beat ourselves up, it's just an inefficient way of getting the job done. And so if we can be, we can offer ourselves kindness when we're suffering and when we're feeling uh, overwhelmed, that's the best, most effective way of bringing your best efforts and uh, getting the best results. And so really kind of cultivating this, this sense of, of uh, self-compassion, accurate awareness. It's not about, you know, lying to yourself or, or making your, you know, being nice to yourself. It's about being kind to yourself. And I think that's a, a skill that, that we all benefit from. <laughs> Thank you so much. Those were wonderful, wonderful answers. I hope all of you learned a little something about what Northwestern Engineering is all about today. Again, I want to thank our wonderful panelists, Associate Dean of Undergraduate Engineering, Wes Burkhart, Assistant Dean of Undergraduate Engineering, Joel Holgrieve, and Assistant Dean for Student Affairs, Ellen Worsdahl. Uh, I, again, am Tony Garcia. Amanda Bustamante was there answering all your questions in the chat. Thank you again. Don't forget to check out all the other programming that we have for you this week. I think they did a wonderful job of kind of pubbing them throughout the presentation. Uh, but Amanda will go ahead and drop the link and we hope to see you throughout the week. Thank you so much. Take care. <laughs>